Hey everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today I have a really fun tutorial for you. We're going to make this quilted um, tic-tac-toe board and we're actually doing this project for our Keepers at Home group. We have about 10 girls in our group right now and they range from ages I think 6 to about 12 or so and so we always do a fun project. Sometimes it's a craft, sometimes it's something else. This month I'm going to be teaching on quilting and so I really wanted to be able to teach the girls how to um, piece together a top, how to actually quilt it, and then you know make the quilt sandwich, do the binding and all of that. So if you're interested in seeing how we made this, let's get started. Okay, for this project you're going to need a couple of supplies. Um, the first one that you're going to need is some backing fabric, and this is just a 10 inch by 10 inch square. You're also going to need a 10 inch by 10 inch square of batting, and this is just the warm and natural batting. Um, you can use any kind you like. You'll also need some squares for your tic-tac-toe board and you're going to want to choose two kind of opposite colors like maybe a lighter and a darker or whatever. You'll need four squares of one of them and five squares of the other and these are both three and a half inch squares and then you're going to need some material for your binding and you're going to need we're cutting ours at two and a quarter inches you'll need 46 inches of binding so if you're buying it by the yard you could get like a quarter of a yard and then cut your strips from that um, if you we cut these out of a fat quarter so we did about um, three strips from the long side of a fat quarter but I'll have all those instructions down below. You're also going to need some pins. Um, if you're doing this with a younger child, I wanted to show these clover clips are also really helpful because you can just kind of clip your stuff together and you don't have to worry about them poking themselves. You'll also need a rotary trimmer and a clear acrylic ruler. And if you're um, watching this and you're, um, let's say, under the age of like... 15, you might want to have an adult help you with this. Um, you'll also need some buttons, and we just grabbed some of these big chunky buttons because they were cute. You can find these at your local craft store. You can also use um, just regular buttons as long as you have five of two different colors. The last thing that you're going to need is some 505 or any kind of temporary fabric adhesive. I like this one because it seems like it holds really well. Um, and I also like this for younger kids because they're not dealing with pinning um, layers together and that kind of thing. So this just makes it a little bit easier. But if you do use this, you're going to want to spray your fabrics outside so that you have adequate ventilation. So, oh, and you'll also need a self-healing mat and your sewing machine. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing t you're going to do is lay out your fabrics how you want them so that you know what order to sew them in. So Tinkerbell is going to arrange her fabrics in a pattern, and you're going to just do every other color. So her first row is going to be pigs, then pink, then pigs again. And then her next row will be the opposite, pink, and then a pig, and then a pink. And then her last row will match her first row. There we go. Okay, now that she has her fabric laid out, you're gonna take your center row and you're gonna flip your fabric so it's right sides together. And then you're gonna sew a quarter of an inch seam down this edge. And you're gonna do that with this one. And also with this one. And if you sew these in order, you can kind of keep them chained together and your pieces will stay in order. So we're gonna take that over to the sewing machine and do our quarter of an inch. Okay, so Tinkerbell is down at the machine and we just have a straight stitch and she's going to sew a quarter of an inch down that right side of her seams. Make sure you have your fabric right sides together. Go ahead. And I have my machine set so it doesn't go quite so fast. If you have a younger person working on this project, um, you can slow down your machine so that they don't hurt themselves. Alright, we're going to take our next row and we're not going to cut our fabric. We're just going to lay our next, just leave it. We're going to lay our next one in there and then just keep sewing. This is called chain stitching or chain sewing. And you, since these are such little squares, you don't really need to pin them together. But if your student is having a hard time, then you might want to have them pin them together. Okay, and we're going to add our last one in. These fell on the floor. And again, don't cut your thread, just keep sewing. Make sure they keep their fingers away from that needle. Okay, now you can cut your thread. It's the scissors button. 
Okay, we've brought our sewn pieces back over to our table, and as you can see, they're still stitched together, um, but that'll just go ahead and keep them in the right order, and we just open them all up nice and flat, and then you're gonna take your last row and carefully fold it over so your right sides are together again. And if you'd like to kind of put a pin in these, you're welcome to. If not, you can just carefully carry the whole thing over to your sewing machine. And why don't you put a pin in that one? And then you can sew down them again. And this, by chain stitching them like this, you're going to keep your pieces all in the right order. So let's carefully carry that over to the machine. All right, so now she, we're back over at the machine, and she's got her pieces laid out all nice and flat, and you're going to want to pull that pin out. Make sure your fabric is still lined up at the bottom as you go, and just keep it lined up, not down here, this piece right here. Make sure those two edges are lined up. There you go. Okay, and it's okay if you have some stitches in between. They don't need to be right up next to against each other. Okay, keep going. And she's going to sew down all three of those sides, stopping to pull out the needle. <laughs> pull out the needle before you get to it, please. You don't want to sew over the needles because you could break your needle in your sewing machine and that would be bad. Okay, all right, go ahead and cut your thread. Okay, so we've brought our piece back over to the ironing board, and now what we're going to do is we're going to iron it, and we're going to iron our seams going in opposite directions, and what that means is this first row we're going to iron the seams pushing them this way, for the second row we're going to iron the seams pushing them this way, and then for the third row we're going to iron our seams pushing them this way again. So let's go ahead and do that first row going this way. There you go. All right, and I'll do this one going this way. And you just kind of want to pat them down and make sure that you're not accidentally turning your other seam the other way. And then we're going to do our last one going back this direction. Okay, perfect. Okay, we're back over at our cutting table, and we've ironed our pieces, and now we're going to iron this top row to the middle row, and then once we're done with that, we'll iron the bottom row to the middle row. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to flip the whole row upside down, and as you can see, it's still attached, so our pieces are still in the right order, and we're going to do what's called nesting our seams. Okay, so as you can see, once we flipped our rows together, you can see that one of the seams is going this way, and then one of them is kind of going this way. And you want to kind of do what's called nest them together so that the center points are touching. And then you can take one of your pins and just pin on one side of that seam, and that will hold it together, and you'll get a nice, perfect corner when you iron this open. So we're going to go ahead and do that to all of our seams. So go ahead and do this one on. And just be careful when you're using your pin. Okay, so as you can see, we have our top row folded down on top of our bottom row, so our right side are together, and then we've pinned at both of our seams. Now we're going to take this whole thing over to the sewing machine and sew a quarter of an inch stitch down this side. Stop before you get to that needle and pull it out, like right now. There you go. And you want to just kind of keep pushing down on your, your corner right there when you pull your pin out. That way your seam will stay together. Okay, so that side is all sewn. So we can open that side up and just kind of press it back. And now we're going to sew on this side. So just go ahead and flip those so they're right sides together. And again, you're going to want to nest your seams and pin them right at the junctions. Perfect. Okay, we're going to take that down to our machine and sew a quarter of an inch down this edge just like we did the last one. Okay, so we're back over to our ironing board and the next thing she's going to do is iron the seam. And so you just kind of press down on your seam, don't press it the wrong way, but just to set your stitches and then you'll flip that back 
and then carefully press it open. And then we're just going to flip it around and do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so the next step is to baste our um, quilted part. So we have our top that we just finished. We're going to set that aside. We're going to get our backing and our batting fabric. And we're actually spraying inside for purposes of this video. So we just grabbed some paper towels to cover our work surface. And then we're also going to need our 505 um, spray. So the first thing you want to do is set your batting or backing fabric in the middle. Don't spray yet. And you want to make sure that it's the pretty side or the right side down. And then you're going to get your batting. And we're going to go ahead and spray just a light spray. Make sure you kind of get the corners um, of spray on our piece here. And make sure you get it all over. You want the corners and then in the middle too. Okay, and then we're going to just carefully lay our batting down on top of that piece. And we have our windows open in here so we have nice ventilation. And you just want to press it on there and then just make sure you don't have any um, you know, wrinkles or anything like that. So that looks good. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to place our square on top and we're going to do that one as well. And we just want to make sure that it fits on there pretty good. And just give yourself some inches around the edge and go ahead and do some spray right there. All the way up. You know. Here, hang on, I don't think it's coming up. And you're gonna lay that one down, cover your nose. We're gonna do the same thing on this one, and this is how I base my big quilts also. Okay, now it's time to do some quilting, and you can use a walking foot if you have one. We actually didn't change our foot. She's still using my quarter of an inch foot, so whatever you guys have at home. And she's chosen to do straight line stitching so um, at a diagonal, so she's gonna go from corner to corner all the way down this piece just doing a nice straight line. Alright, so we're back over at our cutting board and my daughter has finished sewing little X's all along her project so it's done being quilted and now we're just going to square it up and I have a nice square ruler here and we're going to square this up at nine and a half inches by nine and a half inches and I would not probably let, recommend letting your child do this part because these are very sharp. Okay, so then we're going to turn it and do the other corner. And nine and a half by nine and a half, and I'm just lining up my lines on the edge here. So you want the line on your ruler included in your fabric or on the edge of your fabric, if that makes sense. And then we're just going to trim away all this excess. And there we go. So we're going to set this aside, and we're going to work on our binding next. Okay, so to sew your binding together, you're going to take two of your strips and make sure that you have them laid right sides together. So the wrong side is showing on both sides. And we're actually going to just show, sew a quarter of an inch down this short edge. And then we're going to grab our third piece and add that on as well. Okay, don't cut it. Stop. Okay, so we sewed that first strip. Now we're going to take this top strip and just flip it right side up and lay it down next to it and grab our third strip, lay it right sides down, and then we're just gonna go ahead and keep sewing down that quarter of an inch as well. Okay, now we're gonna head to the ironing board. So, okay, so we're back at our ironing board and we're just gonna take our scissors and clip the two pieces apart. All right, and we're gonna iron our seams open just so it's not too bulky. And so you just press it apart with your finger like that, and then grab your iron tip and just run it along that edge, like so. And then you're gonna do your other one, and you should only have two seams, so this won't take very long. 
Okay, now that we have both of our seams ironed open, we're going to straighten our strip back out and we're going to fold it together in half so that you've got right sides showing so your wrong sides are touching each other and we're just going to iron it down in half and we're going to do that all the way down our entire strip. So now it's time to add our binding to our quilted piece. So you're going to take your binding and you should have a plenty of excess, but you want to just kind of care just kind of stretch it out over this and just make sure that you have enough to go all the way around. Um, and we're going to line the raw edge of our binding or the open edge along the raw edge of your quilted piece. And you're going to just line it up with the edge up here. And then because this is such a small piece, you want to leave about this or much or so on sewed at this point because when we get to the um, point where we're going to join it together you just need some extra space. So I'm actually going to have her start right about down here about like an inch and a half or so up off of the corner and we're going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way around and I'll show you what to do when we get to these corners. Okay so we're going to start here and you want to stop stitching a quarter of an inch before you hit your corner and I just stuck a pin in there at about a quarter of an inch so she knows where to stop. So go ahead and start and you want to just do stop and then we're going to do a back stitch and just to secure that and now now let's go ahead and keep sewing around and stop at the pin. Keep going. Right up to next to it. A couple more stitches, just go slow. Okay, stop. Okay, go ahead and pull your pin out and then now you're going to want to back stitch here as well. So watch out. Okay, and then go forward a couple stitches and stop and then go ahead and cut your thread. Okay, all right, so to do this corner, you're gonna take the rest of your material and kind of put your finger right here, fold it open so that your material is a nice straight line from your quilted piece to your binding, okay? And then you're gonna hold it down and pull it back over this way so that you have kind of this little, move your fingers for a sec. So you have this little flap right here, kind of, okay? So let me show you that again. You have your binding straight. You're gonna put your finger here and fold it out so that your binding is straight with your fabric. Hold it in place and then pull it back this way, okay? And once you've got it nice and lined up along this edge, if, you, if it helps, you can put a little pin in here just to kind of hold it and then you're going to bring it back over your machine and you're going to start sewing from this edge and keep on going. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and keep sewing. We're just going to sew a couple stitches to get that edge secure and then she's going to pull out the pin. Okay, go ahead and pull the pin out of your way. Alright, and now just make sure that your fabric is lined up along the edge of your quilt and sew all the way to the other corner. We're going to do the same thing when we get there. Keep going. Okay, stop. See, you've got a little bit, your, it's coming off the edge there, so. Go ahead. I'll tell you when to stop. And stop. Okay, now we're going to do backward stitch. You have to hold it down. Just to secure it and then go forward a couple stitches. Okay, oh, <laughs> and then cut it. Okay, so we're at our corner again, so you're going to kind of hold it there with your finger and straighten out the edge. And then fold it back this way. Hold it down. And then go ahead and just stick this whole chunk underneath your sewing machine. Can lower your presser foot and continue sewing.
Okay, we're at our last corner here, and so now what we want to do is leave a gap here, just like we did at the other end. So make sure your original one is out of the way, and you're only going to want to sew down about um, an inch or so just to get this binding on, and then you're going to do a back stitch and go ahead and stop. Okay, stop, and do a back stitch just to secure it. Okay. All right, cut. Okay, so we're back over at our cutting board and you'll notice we have our leftover binding over here and what we need to do is join our binding together so that then we can finalize, finish off this side. So in order to do that, I'm going to do, there's a lot of different ways to do this. I'm going to do what I think is probably the easiest for younger um, people. So we are going to do just a straight, um, a straight join. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to lay one of your pieces down and let's just, because it's, we have so much extra, I'm just going to cut off just like a, somewhere in the middle here and just try and cut nice and straight. And then we're going to make sure that that's nice and straight and then we're going to pull this side straight and we're going to just make it so that you can see the edge of your other piece and you're going to cut this one a quarter of an inch longer than there. So as you can see, this piece goes right here. You're going to line your ruler up with that piece and then straighten out this piece and as you can see right here is a quarter of an inch so I'm just going to make a little clip right there at about a quarter of an inch and then I'm going to go ahead and fold those pieces in half and cut it off. So you should have just a little quarter of an inch overlap there. The next thing you're going to do is take this piece and straighten it out flat and then take this piece and lay it on top of it so that you have right sides together just like you did when you were joining your binding the first time. And then because you're going to have some pull on this, I like to fold it in half like that just so that you don't have so much drag. And you can also take a few pins and just pin this together as well so that it's not getting pulled apart while you're trying to sew it. Whoops. So make sure those edges are straight. and just pin it together like that. Now you kind of want to open it up and just make sure that it looks like it's going to lay straight for you. Um, mine's a little bit puckered here but that's just because we've got the pins in there so it'll be fine. But you just want to make sure you didn't accidentally twist your fabric or anything like that. So again you're laying both your pieces right sides together and we're just going to sew a quarter of an inch down this edge. Okay so we're going to go ahead and sew that together. Go ahead and cut it. All right, now we're gonna just finger press this seam open and then fold your binding in half just like when you were ironing and just line up that seam. And then just lay it flat and just make sure that it fits and this looks great. So now we're gonna go ahead and finish off this seam and you're gonna wanna start kind of on top of your other stitching just so that it's secure and you're gonna do a back stitch. This will do it for you now so just you just have to sew. And you're going to just finish off sewing down that edge and then just do a back stitch to secure at the beginning at the end. Okay, stop. And then just press, press this back stitch button and it'll do it for you. So here's what your project should be looking like. Your binding is sewn on all four sides and if you flip it over you just have your backing. And now we're going to flip this over and machine stitch the binding on the front. So you just need to flip over your piece and just kind of pop your little corners in the edges there like that. All right. And now we're going to take it to our machine and we're going to just make sure this is nice and snug. Grab this piece fold it over and we're going to stitch right along the edge of this binding just to secure it and then I'll show you how we're going to fix these corners so that we have nice mitered corners as well. All right, so you're going to do a back stitch at the front just to secure it and then just keep a close eye and just make sure that you're stitching just right along this edge of your binding. Just go slow and just keep pulling your binding over to make sure that it's tight. And then you're going to stop about an inch and a half or so away from your corner. Okay, 
Ready? Are you there? Okay, so now that we're at our corner, we're going to just flip up one side and then flip over the other side. And hopefully you can kind of see it makes this nice mitered corner here. And whatever side has the bulk on it, I try and put the bulk on the opposite side if that makes sense. So the bulk is on this side, so I'm going to fold that side in first. That way the bulk in the back will be on the opposite side. And then you're going to kind of just try and line up your corners right here as best as you can. If you want to stick a pin in there, you can. Um, I usually just kind of hold it with my finger. Okay, so go ahead and keep stitching all the way to that little corner. Stop. Okay, right when you hit the corner, um, can you take one more stitch? Okay. All right, now leave your needle in the down position, flip up your presser foot, turn your project, straighten your binding out on the back again, and then go ahead and keep on sewing. Okay, I want to try and show this corner up close. So we're going to fold this side in and then carefully fold this side in, trying to match up those corners right there. And then you want to make sure as you're stitching it that you get it stitched in and you catch that corner with your needle before you pivot. Perfect. So when you get to your end, you're going to just stitch over your original stitch line just by a little bit and then do a back stitch to secure it and you're all done. Alright, so our project is completed. It should be looking like this. You should have your binding stitched on both sides and you can see on the back side you're quilting as well. And now all we need are some um, buttons or you could use anything else you want actually that you can think of as you're playing pieces and find a buddy and have a tic-tac-toe game. Alright, so that was our project for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you make one of these yourself, make sure to send me a picture or tag me on Instagram or Facebook. I would love to see what you guys make. And we're all done with our project. So the next thing to do is to just find a partner, get some fun buttons or M&Ms or Cheerios or whatever you want to use and have a fun tic-tac-toe game. So I hope you enjoyed this project and I'll see you next time. Oh, oh man. <laughs> All right, high five.